ultimately, you have um, a presidential ambition. Is that right? Um, let me put it this way. It's, okay. Um, you know, as it was said in the Bible, like the story of David, you see, sometimes certain people are destined for certain things, irrespective of who they are. No matter, even if they, they, they don't look like they are qualified, they don't look like it, they don't. If it's destiny, it's destiny. Now, mine is not necessarily that I have an ambition. It's a call on me. That's what I'll become in the future. Apart How, from, apart who, who, who's called you to become the president of this republic in future? Okay. You see, C. Ronaldo, I don't know if you've really listened to his story. C. Ronaldo used to play with his friends. And uh, I think he said something that when he plays with his friends, he tells them he's going to become the world's best footballer one day. And they look at him and they laugh. But he kept it to himself and he kept pushing. Every time he says that, they laugh, I look at this guy. Uh, but now, C. Ronaldo is one of the best footballers who ever have in this generation. So it is not my duty to convince Kwame or convince Ata. It's just like having a dream. You can have your dream. It is free. So if also feels said, you too, you have a dream or have it. It's my dream that I'm saying. As to whether it will come to pass it between me and my God. So I'm not going to explain to somebody to tell him where I met Jesus at the, at the Sea of Galilee and Jesus said, no, no, it's not. I'm just saying it's a calling. What do, you, what do you intend to do, you know, as you decided to get on this path? First of all, you've joined a political party. You've been part, oh, of, two, you've been I, part of two campaigns towards a, a, pres a presidential win. What's, what's, what's next for you? Okay, so in terms of leadership and stuff like that, you need to be well versed with the issue of governance. You need to be ready. You need to be ready so you don't have to be ready. You need to prepare yourself. So this is like the preparatory stage. That is why when people insult me and do that, it's part of the calling. It's preparing me for what is ahead. So now I know how people think. I know how people reason. So when I get there, I know how to deal with them. So it's part of the process. So I, I'm equipping myself until that day. Yeah. Are you only looking at the ultimate one i know someone like um you know you know nanako Fado's history with um, politics as a little boy growing up with his father yeah. and um the big six um being very active in the 1970s politically i mean he led kumi prekon um was a founding father of um you know npp as we have now yeah. are you are you looking at probably starting from an assemblyman going through the ranks to get to the top or you're just aiming at the ultimate Oh, it's all in the hands of God. You see, my life, my whole life is directed by God. I'll do what I can humanly do. I, I know, but we have God up there, but we also have to play a role here. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Reading, I was reading something on miracles, and then I found out, you know, it's something I've always known, but it, it was really iterated, that you can't just sit down and wait for a miracle. You need to put in some work. Yeah, that's why, that's why I told you I've been doing what I have to do to get there. And as a matter of fact, I don't like saying most of the things I do. Uh, I yeah, I don't, I don't talk. I mean, I don't talk about the things I do. I always shock people. I've always shocked people my whole life. Uh huh. So the preparatory stage is there, but I'm not going to come and enumerate. I'll do this. I'll do that. No, no, no. I don't do that. People should just watch. Tell me, I'm come myself. So they should watch. I pray for long life for everybody. That day will come. And they'll remember all this interview. So as to what I'm doing to get to that place, I can't disclose it on air. Nah. But we are here. All right. Right. Start from somewhere. As you already said, maybe the next time I'll be up simply man somewhere you don't know. But I don't share my I know, right? No, I don't I don't do that. <laughs> let's let's do a flashback. Let's share our politics and do a, a flashback, you know, for okay. uh future presidential candidates. I think it's only right for people to get to know you up close and personal. What what was it like for you growing up? For growing up, growing up for me was, you know, coming from a humble background, you know. I've, I've seen it all when it comes to say, a common deal, a combat deal, then you start using your head to <laughs> to think. I've seen it, I've seen it all. Survive. Survivor, you know, survival instinct, where, you know, you sit down and you don't know where the next meal is coming from, but right. you are here, you are strong in here. You go to school, your school fees is due, you really want to learn, and they call the names and they call you out. Your parents are not in the country, 
you have to hang around. When it's break time, you go back into the school because you want to learn. This is the, the growing up for me. Stay with some aunties. Sometimes the cook, if you are not a good boy, you're Maubindi. So I mentally, I've been fortified. And I grew up at Circle. You know Circle? Tito Lane. Circle, yes. So me, I, I've, I've, I've been through a lot. I've seen it all. So where I am... What, what, kind, of child, what kind of child were you growing up in that space? Because, you know... Um, on that tiptoe lane, there, there are loads of vices. Did you, did no, you no, no, end my, up my, like stealing, stealing something at some point? No, it's never, been, it's, never, it's never been one of my qualities. No, 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 no. I've always been, I've always been that content child. Even if you give me Gary Sokis, I will eat and sleep. I don't, I don't care about what someone else is doing. I'm not jealous of anybody. I'm always content with what I have. If it's mine, it's mine. I always work hard towards achieving what I want. And, um, you know, the least opportunity I get, I utilize it. So, you know, growing up was like, you're growing up with your cousins, your, your siblings, and, you know, you guys are a lot in a family house. But then you have a foresight, and you're like, this is what I want to be. It's always been like that. When we were growing up and I told them I was going to be a star, I said it. I said, me, I'll be a movie star. They laughed at me and said, that's, that's all you wanted to become? No, I told them me I'll be prominent, I'll be big. So I started by I started by saying I'll be a movie star. They were laughing at me because at that time there weren't any serious movie star that make money. It was all about you know Brian those stuff. So I told them me I'll become a star. Even my siblings were laughing at me. But what, what was it about you know, like you said, or Brown Sofodazi and the movies that you liked? Oh, back then that's what we used to watch. Uh, is it is it what Chinese movie? movies? No, no, Shifu, Shifu and all those stuff, you know. Wukum. <laughs> yeah, so if you, you come back from school, you, you, you see Shifu going on, you're excited, you want to watch it. But even at that time, I used to say certain things and people go like, fear, fear, do it too, by fear. And those things that I said, that is what is happening now. When I say them, they try to shut me up. Fear, do it too, they will open the system. No, what I see is not what they see. And in life, for the people watching me, don't let anybody undermine you or subvert you. No. You you have your life to live. If you have a vision, you have a dream, go for it. Chase it. Don't be influenced by environment because if I was really going to dwell on my environment, I wouldn't have gone to Lagos. I wouldn't be here. No. Because the set of where I grew up from, some of them are wayward. Some of them didn't make it. Some of them, I don't even know where they are. But I, I made a decision that even if I'm coming from this setting, I'll make something out of my life. I'll make something good. Yeah. We have about 12 minutes to wrap up. and um, let Oh, we've we'll been talking for long, man. I know. Almost an hour. <laughs> as, a, as a foreshadow, let me say to our viewers that next week, we're going to have uh, Morgan Heritage, you know, celebrated reggae group for all the way from Jamaica. Um, they've won Grammy Awards. They've been on different African platforms. They were in Ghana a couple of years and performed with, with Stoneboy. And um, they're going to be uh, my very special guest right here on um, 360 Live. But for today, we have celebrated, you know, uh, model, actor, producer, director, um, philanthropist. I think it's only right to add politician to it now, right? Well, maybe a pastor <laughs> to a pastor, pastor. A pastor soon. But maybe pastor before you become a president. Yeah. <laughs> mm. And speaking of pasta, there's, there's one side that I know of you and being everything that you are, you know, people look at creative people and they just see what we put out in the public domain. They don't know what we do in the background. I know you're a very spiritual person. What, what, what accounts for this? What do you experience on the way to Jericho? <laughs> okay. So let me be very honest with you. Yeah? My growing up, you know, you said something about miracle. You see, when you look at the family setup, you look around, you see that actually help is not going to come from anywhere. Not an uncle, not an auntie. So that encouraged me to start praying. Believing only God to do something. Right. I, didn't, I didn't put my hope on any human being. So it's all about God. I was always in church. By then it was um, IBWC, where I was chapel now, at uh, ATT State. I used to go there when the the choirs are having all night. I'm there, the instrumentalists, the prayer warriors. I was part of the prayer warriors. I was always praying. 
that is how come I got to see a lot of things about me, what is ahead of me, what I'll become. I was always praying. Even till now, if not for prayers, I won't be here because there are, there are several times attempts have been made on my life when I didn't even know what I was or what I... F physically? Oh, physically, as, you know, orchestration. Sometimes in my sleep, several times they try to take me out. But you see, because I pray a lot and the hand of God is upon me, I'm untouchable. You know, so prayer is a part of me. If I don't pray, I get sick. Those that know me, they know. Even if I leave, if I finish the interview with you right now, and I'm driving to where I'm driving, whilst I'm driving, I'm praying. Because I don't know when the evil one will strike. And I don't have any to do anywhere. All I have is God. The God I've known all this while that has brought me this far. So my prayer life, I don't joke with it. That's, that's all I have. I don't have any other protection apart from God. Young Prince David Osei, you know, telling his family and friends that he wanted to grow up and become a star. How did you finally end up where you are? Okay, so I got to Legon. Before then, I used to do church drama, like church drama, church, the youth, and blah, blah, blah. So I got into Legon, and I started doing TV commercials. My first TV commercial was a condom advert. Okay. By, um, by then it was um, Lintax. Lintax advertising. Yes. So Ivan... Jacob got me that. Yes, we'll be here with you. Yeah. Ivan got me that deal. So after that, I did um, distance learning. By then it was um, uh, uh, former president uh, Kufos era, the distance learning, village communication, I used to teach. Richard Franklin. Yeah. So I did that. Then the same Ivan Kwashiga gave me an opportunity to feature in a Fortune Island. By then I was in level 200 in Legon. So I started becoming popular on Legon campus. Then just as I finished school, I go into the movie industry itself. So that's, that's what happened for me. But I wouldn't say it was easy because... Um, Unlike other actors, when they came into the movie industry, as soon as they go in, they give them a lead role, and the next day they were a star. I had to go from five scenes, 15 scenes, to get to where I am right now. So, that, that's and, how um, it's been over the years, you know, you always wanted to become a star. You're a star now. Would you say it's been rewarding? Um, it has its own merit and demerit. Sometimes I want to do stuff, I can't do them because people know me. Sometimes that certain like things I really want to say. Sorry? Like what? Like there was a day I was driving, I was so, so hungry. So hungry. So I saw some Yoko Gali and Coco at uh, Jowulu. I saw a lot of people there. I parked, I wanted to get out, but the, the way there were a lot of people that said, oh no, if I if I drop right now, the next day they're going to say, please, they're going to say, it's broke. So they say, they're Coco, Gali, no, Toro, but, but, but do you really care if someone if someone thinks that you're broken, you're eating cocoa and dairy? No, no, no. At that, at that particular point, there were too many people there and there was nobody working with me. So it's just me alone standing to go and stand and so my mimi me you know. I didn't care about somebody saying whether, but I was just hungry. So I couldn't buy it. And sometimes, you know, you go to certain places and because they know you are preserving, you are buying stuff and they inflate the price. Yes. Which is bad. So sometimes you bag mm -hmm. and you say, oh, well, I'll see be in our own person, you know. So it has this advantage and disadvantage. Yeah. But it comes with a job. It is what it is. It comes with a job. Mm -hmm. How many movies have you starred in so far? Um, I would say over 100. And um, I was the first person to ever do a one-cast movie. A full movie which featured myself, myself, and myself. Just me alone. You won't even see the shadow of any person. It's called Last the, Night. The entire movie. The entire movie, yeah. It's called I need Last to Check Night. it out. Yeah. How long ago was that? Oh, that was 2017, 18. Stephen Appear even attended the, the premiere at the Silver Bed. It's just me alone in the entire movie. That movie has won a lot of laurels, awards internationally in Texas, Nigeria. What, what, what goes into a production like that? You know, I mean, we've seen it in Hollywood. I think the first time we saw anything close in Ghana was when Abraham Mohinijan shot a Braffworth video, you know, having him um, as three individuals. 
Oh no, me it was just me. It's not about three. It's me running the show, being in the movie, action going on. It's just me. Yeah, I I did that because at that point in my career, people oh, were yeah. trying to. They were trying to kind of stereotype me like I can only play the lover boy, the girls. Then I told them, oh. I'm a serious actor. I could do stuff. So I decided to challenge myself and do a movie, just me alone. So when you are marking it, just mark me. And it was, it was, a, great, it was a great experience. But didn't you like the whole, you know, lover boy kind of roles in No, I, I still like it. But, you know, we need diversity because it's such that in the industry, when they know you are good at one thing, they always want to give you that. So they don't see the other side of you. And I felt like it was about time they saw the other side of me to balance it so that I won't be like, you know, every day I have to take off my shirt before, you know, somebody will be excited. Yeah. yeah. Lover Boy on set, done over a hundred movies. Who's the best person you've kissed in a movie, in a movie scene? Best person? Home and abroad or Ghana? Well, both. Let's say home and abroad. Home. So two, two <laughs> individuals here. Two individuals. <laughs> yeah. Let's start. From uh, two individuals, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so Yvonne and... Um, Which of the Yvonnes? Nelson. Yvonne and um, and Martha. Martha and Koma. Martha and Koma, yeah. They are great kisses. You said which of the kisses did you say which of the kisses did I enjoy? That's what you said, right? Yes, yes. Uh, that's why I said, yeah, the two of them. Have you ever been in that space where you know psychologically you decided to go beyond just the acting because you're like you said you enjoy look at you licking your lips? <laughs> oh no, no, <laughs> no, 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 because of that. Like you know, you're having are you having no. flashbacks? No, no, I took a drink, so I'm just oh, okay, okay, <laughs> you know, like um. You're, you're in a movie scene, you're, you're kissing, and you're like, okay, maybe I could go beyond this. Has this struck you before? Kody, to be very honest with you, yeah? yeah, never. You see, when I'm acting, I'm in a space. I mean, I'm in a space, and at that moment, it's not Prince David, it's a character. The character. So I play the character. Once they say cut, everything is gone. You can act around. Why is it say cut? Everything is gone. I don't know you. We just, that's it. Because how many people can you do that with? And sometimes you can be embarrassed. If you're not careful, some of these girls, they don't play. They will embarrass you. Like, ah, they're never now, you're now, you know. They will embarrass you. So you just strictly professional. We, we do what we have to do. And when they say cut, that's it. What I do on set is not who I am. No, 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 no. Okay. Okay. Yeah. At, at some point, you, you actually migrated, or let me say, relocated to the United States. and um, Yeah, to the U.S. Uh, yeah. That's where your, your wife and, and... How many kids do you have now? Three. Three? You've, done, you've been working girls very on one boy. One boy. Okay. Okay. What, what motivated this? Were you tired of the Ghanaian scene in Ghana, or you were looking for greener pastures? What was it? Oh, no. I, I You know, uh, by then, my wife had just given birth to the... The younger ones, because I think. Where, where did you meet her? My wife has been my first. That's my first girlfriend. My wife is my first ever girlfriend. I had. At what age did you meet her? I met my wife around seventeen, eighteen. We're in the same church. Okay. So we we're friends. We we're friends. We went to school, Legon. Then we started seeing each other, and uh, you know, we got married. So my wife has been with me since I was a, like an adult. Yeah. Adults so what you human. so what you've been like together for about well, how many years? Um, we've been together for like seventeen years, yeah. Friends and yeah, seventeen years, yeah, mm. Mm. yeah, mm. seventeen years, mm. yeah. Right, right, mm. right, right. So what are you? Are you? Are you finally back here? Like you know, no, you're you see, hundred percent to do your okay, art so, Yes. Yeah, so when you, I, I kind of alternate. I go there for some time and I come. Now the kids are grown because back in the days when you used to see me there often, I used to go and change the diapers and do what I have to do as a father. Now they are all grown. One is four, one is five. They are going to school, kindergarten. So it's, it's easy to take them to the daycare whilst their mother also do what she has to do. So now I, how do I put it?
I don't go like I often used to go, like, you know, every now and then I'm traveling. Even at that, people said I was doing drugs because um, they didn't understand why I was traveling like that. I was just traveling to see my family. Mm. And they said I was doing drugs. I've not even seen a drug before. I don't know what it looks like. <laughs> don't you feel like you're not entirely hands-on, you know, in terms of your upbringing since you're here? How, how many months do you spend in Ghana? Oh, if not for the COVID, sometimes in, in six months, I go there like three times. Okay. okay. Yeah, and I'm always on the phone with them. They are always calling me video call. And I do you do you think that's enough? Do you think that's enough in terms of building a relationship as a father? Oh, at the moment, father is making money. The the bills that I pay in America, I get the money from Ghana. I can't work in America except I want to chase my Hollywood dream, which I tried some years ago. We, yeah, what well, you did some years ago. Yes, it didn't work out. I came back. So this is where daddy makes the money and sent to them. But you still started something. You you were on the path. You started something. Yeah, I still have an I still have an agent there. That's how come I used um my US number here. So, because the agent they won't call a Ghana. So when there's something really important I need to audition for or I fit for that role, they call me and I, I go to LA and go and do it. So I still have it. Yeah. But because mm -hmm. of COVID now everything is kind of slow. Yeah. 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 I mean, Prince, before before you leave, we've done uh, one straight hour and a minute. Whoa. Uh, what would you want to tell uh, young people who look up to you as an actor? Well, this is what I'm going to say. Um, in the first place, I always say this. Have a big dream. Have a very big dream. Have a foresight. Have a focus in life and um, don't let nothing distract you. Don't let your environment determine who you become. I don't care where you're coming from. You can become whatever you want to become. You can become whatever you decide. The decision is yours. You have to decide what you have to become. And don't pay attention to what people say because people will say. Whether you are good, they will say. Whether you are bad, they will say. And the good thing is when people start getting at you, know that you are ripe for a breakthrough because if you have a mango tree, that doesn't have ripe mangoes. Nobody will throw a stone at it. Nobody. They will be part of it. So when they keep throwing stones at it, use that opportunity. opportunity Time up. Believe in yourself you. and yeah. above all praise. Yeah. Mm. Because if you don't have favor and acceptance, you struggle. No matter how handsome you are, no matter how articulate you are, no matter how talented you are, the people need to accept you. So if you don't find favor before the people, you struggle. So favor and acceptance is very important in all that we do. And I love you guys. Your, hold on, one last question before. What, what's been your lowest moment in, in, in life? Lowest the one moment. thing that when you look back, you always have a frown on your face. Um, I used to. I used to have that. But lately, I've said to myself, whatever misfortune, whatever failure, whatever shame, whatever disgrace that came my way, it has made me a better person. You know, we don't always fail, we learn. So I've learned from all my past failures, experiences. Uh, my lowest moment was when, you know, folks fabricated lies about me and um, I felt I needed to justify myself. But then again, I said, oh, yeah. well, what, what exactly did they say about you? Uh, we'll talk about it next time. <laughs> <laughs> Praise. Thank you so much for making time for me. Um, this for us this this evening. I really appreciate you know. This, it's, uh, it's been very interactive. It's very yeah. Interactive. The first um, edition of Three Sixty Live, and uh, we're, we're excited uh, to have had you as our very first guest. Thank you so much, brother, for having me. It's a pleasure. All right. Yeah.